Frick. I co-direct the Tuberculosis Project at Treatment Action Group, or TAG, an advocacy organization in New York City. My advocacy focuses on ensuring that everybody can access the highest attainable standard of TB prevention, and that includes advocacy to develop new vaccines against TB. I also lead TAG's research to track global spending on TB research and development, and I'm looking forward to presenting that work today. Today, I'm presenting an overview of HIV and TB vaccine R&D funding. And since we're still early in this new year, I do wanna commemorate 2021 as the centennial anniversary of the BCG vaccine, still the world's only vaccine against TB. Um, as essential as this global health product is and as important as BCG is for protecting children against TB, I sincerely hope it doesn't take another 100 years to develop new vaccines against TB to either replace or more likely accompany BCG. So with this anniversary in mind, um, let's jump into the funding data. Um, I first want to um, present an overview of what I'm going to discuss, which will begin with sources of data for vaccine R&D funding. Um, I'll then introduce funding for TB vaccine R&D, funding for HIV vaccine R&D, and make some quick comparisons between the two fields. I want to share a little bit about what we know about COVID-19 vaccine R&D funding, and then end with some reflections on what we can do together as a community working on HIV and TB to make the case for more vaccine funding and to make this case um, working together. So first, the data sources. The most prominent and most cited estimates of funding for TB and HIV vaccine R&D come from reports um, produced and published by nonprofit advocacy organizations. And these reports share a similar methodology, which makes them at least broadly comparable and generalizable. The methodology consists of sending annual surveys to biomedical funders of research and development, asking them for expenditure information on particular categories of research. On the TB side, we have the Treatment Action Group and Stop TB Partnership Report on TB research funding trends conducted annually since 2005. Um, the most recent year of funding data is from fiscal year 2019 and was published um, in December 2020. For HIV vaccines, we have the AVAC and Resource Tracking for HIV Prevention R&D Working Group Report, which has data back to the year 2000, and the most recent year available is fiscal year 2018. And then combining TB, HIV, and now COVID-19 too, as well as other neglected and tropical and priority global health diseases, is the GFinder Report um, conducted since 2007. Today, I'm going to mostly be focusing on data from the TAG and the AVAC reports, and I'll be letting you know when I'm citing data from which report. I also want to point out that increasingly we have some really interesting work and good estimates on global health R&D spending from academic and other third party groups. And although I won't be discussing it today, I do want to call attention to this really excellent paper by Mike Head and colleagues on how over $100 billion um, for uh, infectious disease research was allocated between 2000 and 2017, looking specifically at funding from um, the G20 countries. So um, to look first at global funding for TB research and development, um, the world is more than uh, halfway short of what's um, needed for this research activity. What I mean by that is that the UN high level meeting on TB called on member states to spend US $2 billion per year on TB research and development. And what the tag and stop TB data show is that in most years, the world um, spent about one third of that goal. So between 2009 and 2016, as you can see from the image here, the world spent somewhere in the 600 to 700 million dollar range. And this includes spending on all forms of TB research from basic science to implementation science with product development included. In recent years, 2018 and 2019, total spending on TB research and development for the first time crossed the $900 million mark, um, which was really a landmark achievement for the field. But at $900 million a year, we're still more than halfway short of that $2 billion goal set by the United Nations. 
So recognizing that underspending in previous years means we now have to spend more in future years to make up the deficit, the Stop TB Partnership is calling on uh, governments and other stakeholders to now spend $2.5 billion a year for TB research. The other thing to point out here is the yellow line on this graph, which shows you um, how the nominal funding figures have been adjusted for inflation and represented in 2005 constant dollars. So you can see that nominal increases in TB research spending, though encouraging, look a lot more modest when we take inflation into account. And so actually the progress we've, na we've made is even less substantial than what um, the, the annual funding figures would suggest. Looking now at funding for TB vaccine research specifically, in fiscal year 2019, the world spent $116 million on research to, to develop new TB vaccines. And 50% of this total came from one institution, NIAID, at the US National Institutes for Health. About 30% 30, uh, 30 or a third of the total came from the Gates Foundation. So together, the top two largest funders of TB vaccine research and development account for 80% of all spending. So the field is heavily reliant on just a few major donors. The table shows you annual spending on TB vaccine R&D um, over, over time for the 11 year period 2009 to 2019. Um, and what you can see is that the, the 2019 figure of 160 million is basically what the field spent at the start of the period in 2009 when 115 million was spent. So we haven't made a ton of progress over these 11 years. We're kind of right back to where we started. And in the interim, we um, often dipped below um, below these, these high peak marks um, substantially. So in total over these 11 years, the world spent just over a billion dollars on TB vaccine research and development, far short of what it will take to develop a new TB vaccine, develop a healthy pipeline and sustain that pipeline with basic science, translational science that has, that has to be done. Looking now at HIV prevention research and funding for it and turning to the AVAC report, um, it's clear that the HIV prevention space includes research on a lot of interventions from microbicides to vaccines to PrEP, treatment as prevention and, and other things. Vaccines make up the biggest part of this funding story. In 2017 and 2018, AVAC and the working group estimate that the world spent um, just over $1.1 billion on all forms of HIV prevention research. About 75% of these annual totals was taken up by spending on HIV vaccine science. What's interesting, I think, is to look at where the money comes from. And so if you look at funding by sector, um, about 80% of HIV prevention science is funded by the public sector. That means governments. Um, with the philanthropic sector, um, the second largest funding category and in industry um, behind that. The same story can be told for TB as well, where in any given year, about 70% of funding comes from the public sector. Philanthropies are the second largest funding category and industry is the third largest. So both fields, HIV and TB vaccine development are really heavily reliant on public sources of money um, to advance critical research. This slide shows you um, funding information on HIV vaccines um, specifically um, from 2000 to 2018 in the graph and, and 2009 to 2019 in the table. Um, the 842 million spent in 2018 is just kind of under the average for the recent 10 year period and certainly far below the peak spending we saw in 2007 when the world spent just shy of a billion dollars that year on HIV vaccine research. So in total, over this 10 year period from 2009 to 2018, the world spent about 8.5 billion on HIV vaccine science, much more than it spent on TB, but obviously not enough to develop a new um, uh, or a uh, first vaccine against HIV. So turning now to some quick comparisons between the two fields, um, if you take this 2009 to 2019 data, this 11 year range, it took the TB vaccine field the full 11 years of this period to reach $1 billion in funding, a milestone that the HIV vaccine field achieved in less than two years. 
So average annual funding for the two over this period, about $98 million a year for TB vaccine research on average, compared to about $852 million as an average for HIV vaccine research, about an eight times difference. If you look at the largest donor over this time period for both fields, it was the same, the US NIH, but the NIH spent um, 278 million on TB vaccine development and 5.6 billion on HIV vaccine development. So looking at spending within that largest funder, there's about a 20 times difference in terms of what the NIH spent on HIV vaccines compared to TB vaccines. And as discussed, the proportion of funding from the public sector is significant for both fields. It was interesting to see that the TB field is slightly um, less comprised by public funding than the HIV vaccine field, um, which is not something that I predicted before pulling the numbers. The difference is not attributable to a higher industry investment in TB. It's that TB is even more reliant on philanthropic funding than the HIV vaccine field. And most of that philanthropic spending um, comes from the Gates Foundation. So this table then compares top funders of TB and HIV vaccine R&D for the most recent fiscal year for each field. The top two funders um, in both fields are the same, NIH and Gates. Other common funders are represented in red, uh, namely the European Commission and the EDCTP. And otherwise, the fields have some differences in terms of who the top funders are. Um, there are funders who contribute to HIV work that don't fund TB work, namely USAID and the US Military HIV Research Program. The TB field, the Korean Ministry of Health and Welfare is the fifth largest funder um, in the most recent fiscal year, and the Indian Council of Medical Research is um, right behind it. Um, ICMR has really become one of the largest funders of TB research globally over the past five years, um, and in large part due to the recognition that India has the world's largest burden of uh, of TB and the government has really advanced TB research in a mission mode. So we do see some differences in composition between who funds um, which category of research. Looking now at COVID-19 and what we know about um, R&D funding for COVID-19 vaccines, in October 2020, GFinder released its initial tally of COVID-19 R&D spending, um, which was $9.2 billion, of which they said about $5.5 billion went to vaccine R&D efforts. A more recent estimate comes from January 2021. A European foundation released an estimate that government spent at least 93 billion euro on COVID-19 vaccine and therapeutic research during the last 11 months. And of this 93 billion euro, the vast majority, 95% of it, went to vaccine research against COVID-19. It was interesting that the Canup Foundation um, saw that more than 90% of this funding for COVID-19 vaccine research was actually committed via advanced market commitments, um, such as Operation Warp Speed um, by the US government, which may include a mix of both direct development spending as well as some um, preparatory spending for manufacture and commercial scale. About 32% of this funding um, came from the United States, 24% from the European Union and its member states, and 13% from Japan and South Korea. So this is, um, I think, one of the most recent and, and more comprehensive estimates of the COVID-19 vaccine R&D funding picture. But this is a story that is still being written, and I'm sure we'll get more precision in these numbers um, as, as the year progresses. I want to take just a closer look at one slice of the COVID-19 vaccine spending picture, which is um, a part of the Operation Warp Speed portfolio, and particularly the spending by the US agency called BARDA. I went to the BARDA website and tallied the contracts and commitments they made to different COVID-19 vaccine developers um, over the past 11 months, and you can see those figures here over $4 billion to Moderna, nearly $4 billion to Pfizer and BioNTech, $2 billion to Sanofi and GSK, and so on, for a total of just under $15 billion committed just by BARDA for COVID-19 vaccine um, development. If you take just the Moderna um, award, um, that $4 billion awarded to Moderna constitutes nearly half of all money spent on HIV vaccine R&D in 10 years, based on the figures from AVAC we just reviewed. And taking just the Novavax contracts, um, which is one of the smaller ones in the BARDA portfolio, the $1.6 billion to Novavax is more than all expenditures on TB vaccine R&D in 11 years. So it's clear that COVID-19 is 
um, operating in a completely different level of uh, financial atmosphere from HIV and TB vaccine science, at least in terms of the funding picture. And it's impressive not just how much money has been been mobilized, but how quickly it's been mobilized in a period of less than 12 months. So to recap quickly, um, the Knup Foundation estimates government spent nearly 90 um, billion euro on COVID-19 vaccines in 11 months. It took 11 years for the world um, uh, to spend uh, just 1.2% of this total on vaccines for TB, and in that 11-year period to spend 9.6% of what was spent on COVID-19 on HIV vaccines. So uh, HIV and TB, you know, in relation to this COVID-19 denominator, it looks like we're, you know, really giving them a pittance compared to what governments were able to mobilize against COVID-19. These fractions obviously don't make any kind of sense, um, given the urgent need to develop new vaccines against TB and HIV into until this year, TB was the leading cause of death from a single infectious agent globally and is estimated to be responsible for the deaths of 1 billion people in the past 200 years. HIV still kills nearly a million people a year and is responsible for tens of millions of deaths since its emergence. We have to develop new vaccines against these two pathogens. It's interesting to see that if you take BARDA, which is sort of one of the strongest arms of the US government response to COVID-19 vaccine research, the nearly 15 billion committed for COVID-19 vaccine R&D by BARDA, um, and, and if you want to compare that figure to what BARDA has spent for TB vaccine R&D over the agency's history, it's a really simple comparison. It involves no math because BARDA has spent nothing on TB vaccine development. So I think this illustrates that there are some untapped sources of government funding for R&D um, for TB and HIV vaccine development, and that this moment um, is really one that we have to think about how do we move forward as a field together and ensure that we secure the funding we need to develop new TB and HIV vaccines. So with um, that in mind, I wanted to end by just reflecting briefly on how we make the case for more money together. And I think part of the answer depends on emphasizing the broad benefits of TB and HIV vaccine R&D. What I mean by this was illustrated really well in a recent Wall Street Journal editorial on how HIV research laid the foundation for COVID vaccines. It quoted Tony Fauci as saying that everything we do with every other pathogen spins off things we've learned from HIV. I think it's also fair to say that at least many things we do with many other pathogens spin off things we've learned from TB. Certainly BCG was one of the first vaccines to develop through steroidal passaging. Some of the earliest clinical trials were conducted for TB treatment. There are more recent examples as well. And we really need to begin to emphasize how a dollar spent on TB or HIV science travels far beyond just the TB and HIV fields. To um, illustrate that for TB, I took the TBVI pipeline of TB vaccines under development and highlighted in yellow those that have um, are either a vaccine that's being studied directly um, for its potential to prevent COVID or severe COVID disease, or have a construct, a uh, sponsor, a platform, or some kind of underlying technology that's now being applied to COVID-19 vaccine development. And you can see that there's a lot of cross-pollination. So figuring out ways to tell this story, I think, will be really important um, as, as we move forward. And in thinking about broad benefits, I, I just want to emphasize that it's not really a story about trickle down. It's not saying that a dollar spent on HIV will eventually make its way to something else. It's not even just about ripple effects that uh, money spent on TB will have, you know, unintended consequences um, that may have benefit down the road, but really about building resilient webs and networks of mutual benefit and interdependence. So the cross disease benefits harnessed from TB and HIV science are clearly evident for COVID-19. And it's about how do we raise investment in such a way that we recognize that we're building resiliency into our scientific ecosystem, we're preparing ourselves for future pandemics, and in doing so, we're also pursuing specific product development objectives um, for the diseases that we're trying uh, to end. So on my final um, note, I just want to say that, you know, I focus today mostly on the financials and the funding picture, but I think talking about HIV and TB vaccine R&D funding is a bigger conversation than just money spent. 
we should also be asking ourselves, how can we fund R&D in ways that promote equitable access to the benefits of scientific advancement? This is a big part of the COVID-19 vaccine story that we're grappling with right now. And we know from our experience in HIV and TB that accessibility of a final product or intervention is determined in large part by the structure and governance of funding agreements and scientific partnerships. So I echo the UNAIDS call for a people's vaccine for COVID-19 and I'll extend it further by saying that we urgently need a people's vaccine for HIV and for TB as well. Um, so thank you and I hope you have a good conference and, and please feel free to reach out to me at any time with any questions on the information presented. Thank you.